This is supposed to be Hebel foam. Let's give it a stab. I mean, they have to repair this anyway. Yep, foam, foam, foam. This is foam, it's supposed to be Hebel. I don't care. Mate, rip it out, mate, rip it out. This is supposed to be Hebel, mate. Rip this out. This has to get ripped 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 out. And this has to get ripped out. Hebel's supposed to be installed as per the working drawing. Else, you have to give a discount, mate. I mean, you're cutting costs, mate. Look at that. Come on, mate. Have a look at this. They're installing it on dirt. Like, come on, mate. Are you for real, mate? Look at this, mate. Rubbish. Hebel. This wall right here has to be Hebel. Yeah, Hebel. But this is foam. This is polystyrene. Check, is it polystyrene? Yeah, this one. Foam. Yeah, it has to be Hebel. Good morning, everyone. This is the final video for the year. Uh, and this is a really nice Christmas present for everyone. Just check it out. Double story home in Greenvale, Victoria, already has been paid, fully paid by the homeowners. These homeowners do not know, they don't know about the building contract that much and all that stuff. This builder actually took advantage of them 100% and wait until I show you how he took advantage of these guys. Now the thing is, where you can see right there, take a look at that guys. Take a look at this, double story home. It appears good from far, but far from good. Wait until I show you what's going on here, guys. Take a look here. I really don't know where to start from. Fully paid. First of all, that is in breach of the Building Contracts Act 1995. I mean, have a look. These guys now, we have renderers right here, right now. We have renderers rendering with, never seen this company before, but they're rendering at the moment. And they might have to demo the whole thing soon. And I'm gonna show you guys why later on. But we're gonna start first with the roof. I'm gonna use my drone so we can get a good view of what's going on first. Oh, let's go. All right, let's get this baby in the air and see what's going on. Let's go. So have a look at this home. As you can see here, we've got Double story home, lightweight cladding, and we're gonna go into detail later on, but all the cladding that you see here is not as per the stamp drawings. We can see rain heads that are not, have not been connected. Let's do a quick scan around the whole home. flat roof who wants to make a bet that this box cutter is non-compliant spreader take a look at the spreader right here not sealed let's keep going let's keep going let's go up a bit now what the hell is this? Oh my god. What's going on here? Is this a chimney? Made out of polystyrene? No freaking way. Oh my god. I'm having fun. Let's keep going. Oh, a bit of rubbish here as well. The renderers forgot their rags here. Let's keep going. It 
So I might get, get up on the roof from this point right here. Hmm, what is going on here? Let's zoom in a bit. Oh, check this out as well. No capping. For some reason, everything's made out of foam. Let's keep going and see what else is going on here. Okay. I can see what's happening here. This is a balcony. Has it been constructed yet? We've got here spreaders as well. Not discharging in the direction of flow because there's no half end cap at the end there. So water will discharge straight away there and it shoots out. It has to spread on the lower roof and not directly discharge like that. So I'm gonna defect that item as well. Have a look what else is going on here. Oh, yep, all right. So let's get on this roof and see what's happening. Let's go. Ooh. What is this? Rinda. Hmm, interesting. Okay, let's go back to work. So what we have here is a double-story home. It's a pretty big home, consisting of multiple types of cladding. We have brickwork, 75 mil hebel, um, sky on, James Hardy, sky on, uh, shria boards. Now, as you can see right here, we can't tell what's going on, but we're gonna go deeper into the analysis of this home shortly to show you that this home has not been constructed as per plans. For example, that wall right there is supposed to be Hebel wall. He decided to put polystyrene. Then this cladding right over there is supposed to be another type of cladding. He's installed linear weatherboards instead of the Stria boards from James Hardy. The drainage system, as you can see, has not been connected. And you guessed it right, the roofing is non-compliant and it's my favorite item to pick on. So the subfloor has been signed off by the building surveyor and I'm gonna put, I, I'm, gonna actually, I'm actually gonna put the inspection report for you guys to, have, to, to show you what he's found and what I'm going to find and you let me know if this building surveyor should be licensed. This is a complete schmuzzle forward slash scam. So you guys are gonna be the judge of that, but don't worry about this property. This is another schmuzzle. We're not inspecting that. <laughs> Check it out. Another job that's been abandoned. So let's start with the roof and work our way down. So we're gonna go straight onto the roof area, but have a look at this for example, guys. Have a look at this side of the home, right here. Incorrect cladding, incorrect cladding right here. For example, this middle section right here. First of all, the cladding is incorrect. Second of all, this middle section right here has to have the same cladding as that. This guy, just, this guy has just put, let me have a look. He's put a piece of timber. Let's take a measure quickly. It's a 45 by 180, 190, 190, 45 mil timber. Instead of the cladding, obviously it's because it's easier for him to do. Look at that, no flashing underneath. Just slapped it on and I bet you, oh, there is, sorry, there is slush at the top. But this guy's got two pieces of timber like that. Have a look. See that, butt joint them. Spray, like, like, this painter is so lazy. He actually spray painted. Mate, get a brush, mate, and start brushing away. Spray painting everything, mate. Take a chill pill, buddy. All right, so this is the first item. And I'm actually curious to see this, what this cladding is. Hmm. Hebel, 
What is this? Okay, we're going to measure the thickness of this hebel shortly, but it appears non-compliant. This wall right here as well, according to the plans, right here should be hebel, hebel, hebel. So you can see it's, there's already some cost cutting going on at the moment or incorrect reading of documentation. Oh, okay, I'm just going to focus now on the roof. I've got to focus, man. There's so many defects that I'm getting really excited. So let's go. Oh, let's go. I'm so excited about this. I am so excited, guys. I mean, look at the rubbish here already. Fully paid home. And this is what you get. Look at this missing capping here. What the hell is going on here? Polystyrene everywhere, mate. Foam and timber. What a schmuzzle. Have a look how they've done the fascia. You can actually see the timber. I don't even know what they were going to do here. Like, this is non compliant as well. Have a look. All the way through, this guy's just chucked foam and he's going to render it non compliant. And also, have a look here, guys. None of the roof sheets are turned down as well. Non compliant. Take a look at this silicon job as well. What a complete schmuzzle. This is in breach of HB39 as well. Class 2 screw right there. Plasterer doing roofing again. Uh, let's go and see what's happening there. I actually just noticed that this wall as well has to be Hebel. And look what they've installed, guys. Polystyrene. Polystyrene. Look at that. Foam, mate. Foam. This guy's installed foam everywhere. Foam, foam. This should have been Hebel. So obviously, this is incorrect as well. Oh my God. These guys are cowboys. Oh, all right. We're on top of the mountain. Let's dissect this roof, guys. Let's have a look what's happening here. This guy loves so he loves the foam so much that he just left it in the open to deteriorate. Look at this. Look at this, mate. Seriously, mate. What the hell is this, mate? Look at this, mate. Water coming inside the property. Got fully paid for the job. Missing capping. What the hell is this? Oh my god. This is so far. A pretty bad finding. We've got a spreader spreading onto flashing as well. Non-compliant. It's also not sealed. Non-compliant as well. Have a look at this one as well. This spreader as well. Non-compliant. Let's see what else is going on here. Non-compliant. Non-compliant. All right, we've got, we've got here, we've got one roof here, flat roof, box gutter, discharging straight to a rain head. Who wants to make a bet? It's non-compliant. Another box gutter over there, discharging into a rain head. Who wants to guess that's non-compliant as well? Ah, uh, okay. We'll start with uh, this one right here. Let's check this one out. I'm really excited for this uh, roof. Uh. Ah, a nice flat roof. That is non-compliant because first of all, there's no downturn on these roof sheets. Ooh, another roof. We'll, we'll go and look at that later. Non-compliant here because, oh, no support. The flashing, not stitched every 40 mil, non-compliant, in breach of the NCC and HB39. This, do your best and silicon the rest again. Non-compliant as well. No upstanding pressure flashing installed. Look at this dirty work. All right, what we've got here is a rain head. Now this rain head set up 
and box gutter setup is non-compliant. And there's a, there's a fair bit of items here. First of all, this open here, this open area right here is non-compliant because it has to be 25 mil below the sole of this box gutter. So this here, this opening has to be below this here. So if, we, if I measure this here, we've got 190 now. We've got 190 right here. We've got 190 and this is 250. <laughs> non-compliant. Not only that, this projection of the box gutter is also non-compliant. You can't project it like that. It has to finish flush here because what's going to happen is that it's always going to discharge. Um, it's going to always, if this is lower than here, the overflow will always discharge. When the water projects like this, it's going to hit the overflow all the time and it's going to activate it. I've seen this on multiple jobs. Start, start trimming this back, guys, as per the detail of AS3500.3. Now, also the ceiling of this... Um, a box gutter with the rain head. They've done silicon. Look at this here. Non-compliant as well. Non-compliant as well. Let's have a look what's going on underneath. Switch into underneath and see if it is compliant. You can see the box gutter and the rain head how it is not sealed. Yep, pretty good finding. There you go. Non-compliant. Also, I could see Look at, the, look at the lower roof at the bottom here. Let me just get my light out. Have a look. Have a look right here. There's a spreader discharging. I don't think it's actually discharging this way, not in the direction of flow. And also I cannot see any overflow to this box cutter right here. So when, when this, see this down pipe right here, it discharges all the way down onto this lower roof. So it's, it's basically, a, it's getting water from a higher catchment area. This is not a small roof because it is getting water from the upper roof right here. Where is the overflow? There is no overflow. So that's another breach. And this homeowner has paid for this builder the full amount of money. Now, let's see what else we can find here. So far, there's a lot of items. There's a lot of items here so far. All right, let's go to the next section of the other roof. Have a look at this really bad workmanship right here. Silicon, do your best and silicon the rest, guys. Now let's go to this lower roof here. This lower roof, I bet you this lower roof is non-compliant. I can already tell. Check out the box cutter at the high end. This is a free-flowing box cutter as per AS3500.3. And you guessed it right. This rain head is non-compliant. First of all, not adequately sealed. They've got only silicon. The weir, look where the overflow is. I'm gonna just show you, show you guys how it looks like from this side. Have a look. See that? See, the, see where the rain head is? The box cutter is right here, discharging. So when, when the water when this gets blocked right here, so when this, when this rain head gets blocked, as you can see from these leaves and, and just building debris, the water's gonna go up and go where? <laughs> Let me show you where. Take a good look. Look at this. Not sealed. Yep, there you go. Now, let's take a look at why this whole box gutter system right here is non-compliant. AS3500.3, and I'm gonna show you guys a graph that must be followed. You've got here, we've got, let's see how wide this box gutter is. This is 380 mil, yeah. So at the high end here, we have to work it out by using this graph, and I'm gonna put an extract for you what we've got here. But the minimum, I mean here, look, it's 40 mil. This is, this is not going to comply at all. And I'll show you why by using that graph. We've got a proper overhang, which is good. But 
they've turned down the roof sheets here, but still not enough upstand there uh, for the box cutter. And another thing that I've just noticed as I was bobbing down is take a look at this, guys, right here. Look what's going on underneath here. Take a good look. Oh, let me get some light there. Look at that. Look at this flashing. The foam exposed to the weather, wind driven rain, flashing not done properly. Look, look where we are right here. This is such a hard area to get to. No one's going to see this. And guess what? When you get some leaks, they're, gonna, they're not going to know where it's coming from. And <laughs> sorry, there is leaks already right underneath this balcony. Let me see if I can get you guys. Let me see if I can show you. Look at this. Can you guys see it? Let me just adjust it. Have a look here. Can you guys see the leaks? It's already leaking. And the homeowners haven't moved in yet <laughs> oh sorry shouldn't laugh but this is this is just a scam mate and also check out how they've cut this capping right here no anti-capillary brake non-compliant in breach of hb39 as well what a completion muzzle mate i'm so excited about this job let's keep digging i've just finished the roof hope you guys enjoyed that section now we're going to go around and take a look at around the whole home. Now, as I told you before, this area right here is supposed to be hebel. The bottom section has been changed to be to be foam, but you gotta remember, 75 mil hebel. Now here. I mean, first of all, guys, have a look here. Let's measure how thick this hebel is. This is the subfloor, and the renderers are on site rendering, and they don't know that they have to actually demo this section soon. Because take a look at this section right here, guys. He's put hebel here, and then foam. That's not as per the stamp documentation at all. So I want to measure how thick this hebel is. Um, so I'm going to stick my ruler out there shortly and see what it is. And this subfloor has been passed, guys. And guess what? It's non-compliant. I'm going to go. I'm going to go and grab my iPad, and I'm going to go through the inspection of this subfloor. I'm pretty sure you guys are going to enjoy it because this building surveyor has actually passed it, and the only defect is that this missing blocking. Let's take a look. So now that the renderers have gone away, I really wanted to show you guys this bit right here. Have a look at this. See this? It goes in and out. No back blocking to this. Even though this is gonna get removed because it's supposed to be Hebel, not foam. Seventy-five mil hebel, fifty-five mil, fifty mil hebel, fifty mil hebel. Who wants to make a bet? This is this is fifty mil. Let's make a bet. I'm gonna poke this ruler through the other side, so I can show you that it is fifty mil and not seventy-five mil. Let's take a look. See, this is the joint right here, and this is where it's going in and out. Look at this. So, foam. So I'll poke this through like this so we can see a good reading it's around uh, um, 50 mil right now this is 50 mil so let's have a look on the other side oh yeah i finished yeah. let's have a look on this side and you can see my real my, my little ruler right there 50 mil 50 mil hebel so i managed to find an off cut and my suspicions were correct it is 50 mil 50 mil hebel 
non-compliant supposed to be 75 mil hubel guys and this builder has taken another sh another shortcut not only that this here is supposed to be hubel it is supposed to be 75 mil hubel and then take a look at this it's supposed to be brick here as well now this is brick and this is Foam. Mate, come on, mate. Brick. Foam. This is supposed to be brick. This is supposed to be brick. And look what they've done. Foam. This is supposed to be brick. Brick, good. But this area right here, polystyrene as well. I just can't believe it. So before we go into the subfloor, Let's take a look at this alfresco area right here. Like, you gotta remember that this builder is also a carpenter. Check out his website. Hi everyone. Thank you firstly for taking the time to visit our site and consider my company for all your building needs. My background is in carpentry. It's my passion. Through my experience, I have engaged in my diverse and complicated projects to my satisfaction, from ripping off roofs and adding upper floors to large-scale residential projects. My passion for this business has also led me to dwell into concreting, cladding, bricklaying, flooring, plastering, cabinetry, and tiling, which thankfully has given me added knowledge of all facets of the building trade. Rest assured with me at the helm, you will experience an informative and effortless experience on your next project. Unbelievable. Look for this stamp. When you see this stamp, you can be assured that quality, honesty, and integrity was used on this project. This is our company's branding code, a pride stamp. On every project upon completion and during the handover, we prepare a framed certificate which we call the stamp. This certificate is giving to all our customers to hang in their homes and be remembers of the quality that their home was built on. Questions to ask competing builders. Why aren't all builders required to have trade backgrounds? Which state did you get your license from? What was your occupation prior to becoming a builder? How well do you understand the NCC? How well do you understand performance provision and tolerances? For too long have licenses been handed out by the VBA to people underqualified, unskilled, and most importantly, who have never been on the tools. Yep, you read that right. So, let's take a look at the frame here. How was this passed? I'm not sure. I mean, you can see the missing bolts here, non-compliant. You can also see not enough thread on that bolt after tightening. Cutting cost left, right and center. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through the working drawings, engineering versus the on-site setup, what they've got here. Now, what's happening right here is that this member right here on the engineering says it should be D two DJ1s. Now let's go on this side right here. Two DJ1s. And they've only got one. So this is the first breach. Second, we've got, have a look at the plates here. Have a look at this steel plate. Missing bolts. Bolts not even tightened adequately. Should be a minimum of one thread after tightening. Have a look at this. <laughs> let's see the next item that we've got here we've also got this is a big one actually we've also got um br1 so on the engineering now i've got the ipad here i'm going to put the extract on the screen so it's more clear for you guys br1 now br1 says two 240 45 f17s floor bearer so let's have a look how that is supposed to be installed. Now, 
Now, PF1 is where the connection of BR1 and the other BR1 is. There's, there's actually a, a PF1. Now, a PF1 is a concrete pad footing. And if we have a look at the detail on the engineering of how it's supposed to be installed, I'm going to put an extract on the screen to show you guys how it's supposed to be installed. So, let's go underneath here and, and have a look what they've done. Now, I am underneath the alfresco area here. This is supposed to be BR1. Look what they've done. They've actually got a joist, not a bearer. It's actually missing. Take a close look. Nothing here. And not only that, the actual engineering detail specifies something totally different. It, does, it hasn't got this detail right here. It's got this steel column extending all the way up. And then there's a plate here that is welded here. So it's actually an 8 mil cleat plate. We've got, uh, it has to be a continuous 6 mil uh, continuous weld and two M12 bolts into this. Nothing here. I mean, this guy's got co screws here and it's sitting on a stirrup like that. This is uh, not as per the engineering. And where the hell is BR1? So as you, if you look at the engineering, this here, this is a BR1. BR1, this whole beam, BR1. And there's supposed to be another one going here. Where the hell is it? It is nowhere to be seen. So this is another major item here. And if you notice, they've done the same thing everywhere. They've just sat it on, on these stirrups like this. Look at this. See that? Bypassing the engineering. Look how, look how they've done here. Look how they've done this. Look at that. They've actually coach screwed it straight inside, right on the edge. How is this holding? I don't know. How has this been passed by the building surveyor? Non-compliant. And have a look here as well. Not enough threads on these bolts. I mean, come on guys. Get longer bolts, mate. Are you for real? Let's, let, let's keep browsing around and see what's going on here. This as well. Have a look what they've done here. So it should be something like this. Non-compliant as well. There as well, non-compliant. They haven't followed the engineering. Let's go under here. Look at this, what the hell have they used? To pack this up, look at this. Oh my God, non-compliant as well. How has this been passed? I don't know. Let's keep going. Let's keep going, mate. Yep, there you go. Check this out as well. Look at these guys. Look at this. Passed by the building surveyor. Unbelievable. I'm gonna pull up uh, his findings and I wanna see what he picked up. That, that he actually failed this subfloor for one reason. Let's check out what it is. And not only that, look what they've done here as well. Look at this. No packing. I can put my, look at him, put my hand right there. No packing underneath here. Wasn't picked up by the building surveyor. I dug around here and this is what I found. Good on you, building surveyor. And another item as well. See how they've got dirt here on top of the base plate? Look at this. There it is. Have they got dirt there? Engineering also specifies 75 mil encasement. This whole section has to have concrete, 75 mil encapsulated just to avoid any damage to the plate right there. And it's not installed throughout. This is also another item that the building surveyor has missed. So let's pull up the inspection report for the subfloor. It has not been approved because blocking off floor joist. So this guy didn't even bother getting a tape measure and measuring this joist. It is 45 by 140 mil. Now, why did I do just that? Because AS 1684.2 clause 4.2.2.3 says where the depth of floor joist is equal to or exceeds four times the breadth 
that's when you need blocking. Now, we've got 45 mil. Let's do a quick calculation right now. So, 45 times for 180. And what do we have here? So, we did 45 times 4 equals 180. We've got 140. So, blocking is not required, mate. <laughs> And he missed all the other items. I just can't believe this. I mean, you didn't comment about the columns here. Not as per engineering. It's supposed to extend all the way up. It's supposed to have plates. Not installed. This guy. The bolts, mate. Not enough thread. Encasement. Of, this, uh, of the base plates. Not installed. This guy missed so many items. Like, it's not funny. Let me show you what else he missed. Now that the renderers are gone, I told them if they can give me an hour so I can record because they were making way uh, too much noise. So, let's have a look. So first of all, this area right here is non-compliant. I mean, look what they've done here. This is all polystyrene. It's supposed to be all uh, Hebel. It's supposed to be all Hebel. Look, polystyrene here. They've got foam here. Look at that, you can see. Have a look here, foam and hebel. This is what I want to show you guys. How did this section here get past? How the hell did this get past? I'm, while I'm here, let me just show you this, guys. They're not embedding the mesh. Look at this. They're sticking the mesh first, and then they're rendering. If you read the sticker that comes with this, it states it has to be embedded into the render. So stop doing that, guys. Look at that. Comes off right nice and easy. Look at this. Let me do this one. Look at that. Come on, mate. What's this rubbish work, mate? Rubbish, mate. Rubbish. Now let's get into this balcony right here. The engineering states what type of beams are supposed to be installed here. What, look what they've done. They've installed a 140-45. And then they've installed here another beam and they've tied it with coach screws. One, two, three, four. Take a look. Have a look how they've done this. Now what does the engineering states? So let's have a look at the schedule right here. B34. What the hell is it? It's right there. Two 240-45 LVLs. And how is it supposed to be installed against the other members that are coming out like this? So when two, two, two timbers meet together, this engineer has a specification of how it's supposed to be installed. Let's bring it right up. And there you go. It's right here. So then we have a look. 240. We've got... 200 mil plate. Here's a plate how it's supposed to look like. Right there. Three M16 bolts. And what do they have here? They have two. They have coach screws, first of all. The plate is not as per the engineering. The, um, uh, the beam is not as per the engineering. How did this building survey miss this? I don't know. What is he smoking? I don't know. What a completion muzzle. I mean, have a look at this beam right here as well. Look at this beam right here. This blue beam, it's sitting on this timber. And then, guess what? Have a look. Have a look right there. Now, what the hell is this, mate? Not bearing at all. So, oh, sorry, it's sitting on foam. There you go. Nice. Now, now this right here, this area, polystyrene. See this, see this wall right here? This is the garage area, and I'm going to put an extract on the screen to show you guys what's going on here. Look what they've done. They've actually installed polystyrene. Polystyrene. Foam. They've installed foam to this area instead of installing Hebel. 
Wow. Let me show you what else is going on since now we've got no noise. I'm gonna put my iPad nice and secure. Let's go. Let's go to this part right here. So this here is brick, as you can see, brick. This here, let me get my ladder and have a look what's that. Let me try to bang on it. Foam. Look, foam. Polystyrene. Foam. 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 Polystyrene everywhere, mate. And have a look at this um, sump right here. Non-compliant, no support underneath. Breach of 3500.3. So as you can see here, as you guys can see, this facade here, is not as per the working drawings. And that's why he's got the renderers here today. I'm thinking he's got the renderers here so he can coat everything and we don't find out what cladding they've got. Now, lucky, we actually didn't tell the builder that we're here today because if he knows, he's gonna block access to the job site. So we came to this job site black ops style, like ghosts. No one knows that we were here, except the renderers. So let's keep going. <laughs> let's go inside the home and see what is going on here. So have a look at this guys. Flooring being installed. And let's see what type of flooring this is. Obviously it's floating floor. Look at this. It's actually a hybrid flooring I reckon. Look at this with this little rub underneath. I like it. Let's check out the manufacturer so we can see if it meets the Australian standards. So there's the manufacturer. Let's give it a little scan. There you go. Oh, wow. Hybrid plank installation. All right. Let's click. Oh, what? It's not working. What the hell? Okay. Something's going on here. Oh, mate. Oh, looks like we have to use the Australian standards to actually go through the assessment of this AS1884, the installation of resilient flooring. Now, as you can see here, guys, it doesn't look like, now there's a couple of requirements that must be adhered to before the installation of the floorboards. Is the concrete suitable for the installation of this flooring? Is there enough expansion gaps around the perimeter? I mean, have a look at this here. We've got a water leak happening already and the homeowners haven't moved in yet. The guys are cutting out the plaster, trying to figure out what the hell's going on here. Oh, the flooring is being installed on, look at this, mate, serious, on just dirt and debris. Let's lift it up and see what they're installing it on. These guys, mate, look at this. It's, it, this is actually wet. Oh my God. You know what? I'm gonna get my moisture meter and measure this. This is, this is complete BS, mate. So we're gonna take a surface measurement. We're gonna take a surface reading. I mean, look, you can see here how it's wet. This guy is installing it straight onto, onto moisture. Look at this, Max. Max, 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 Max. So there is moisture underneath this flooring and they're installing the flooring. They don't care. Why are they doing that? I can't believe it. So let's check out other areas. So let's check out this area here. Um, Oh, is that mold? It looks like mold here. Hmm. What is going on here? I wonder if I can lift this up. I want to try and lift this up and see what's going on. Because I bet you there's water underneath here. See, check it out guys. Check out my hand. Water underneath the floor right here. I've 
lifted this off and have a look. There's actually water there. Let's check out, let's check out my meter. Let's check, put it there. There we go. Look at that. Look at this, guys. Water. Water. Maxed out. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So there is stalling on water. They're installing the flooring onto water. Unbelievable. Not only that, guys. So basically, they, they didn't do... It looks like they haven't done anything in terms of preparation of the flooring or any testing. Water. 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 Unbelievable. There's water coming inside this home and... So obvious underneath these boards have a look have a look have a look water going underneath the flooring now let's keep exploring I'm having fun here have a look how they finished how they finished this against uh, how they finished the timber see how, see how there's no gap there has to be a 10 mil gap there has to be a 10 mil gap there has to be a 10 mil gap here. And look, nothing. This is about 10 mil. Let's keep going. No 10 mil gap there. No 10 mil gap there. These guys are just cowboys. I mean, have a look at the area. Have a look at this. They're installing it on dirt. Like, come on, mate. Are you for real, mate? Look at this, mate. Rubbish. I'm, I'm sick of these guys, mate. I'm truly sick of these guys. I mean, before even laying the floor, the AS1884 specifies the following. You have to actually see if the surface is dry. You have to do a moisture reading, surface pH level, surface quality, the surface preparation. There's so many items that have been missed prior to the installation of this flooring. For example, the gaps around the perimeter. Have a look at this here. Look at this. I mean, here we've got three mil. Here we have two mil. And here, it's hard up against the bottom plate. Have a look. I mean, come on. How hard is it to install this flooring, mate? Now, let's take a look at the bathrooms as well here. Waterproofing, non-compliant. The water stop to the opening has not been installed as per AS3740. 2010, puddle flange, nowhere to be seen. <laughs> let's go upstairs as well. Oh my God. And you can see here as well, there has to be a gap of at least one mil off the, the door jam and the flooring to allow for thermal expansion and contraction. Nothing here. They went hard up against the plaster here. Have a look at this. Mate, you gotta remove all the floors now, mate. These guys are cowboys. Let's go up, guys. Oh my God. I'm surprised the home is still standing. Fully paid job. This, this, this job is fully paid. Fully paid, how can this builder invoice? That is in breach of the, of the Building Contracts Act 1995. Non-compliant, they do have a part of flange here. Good boy, missing water stop in here. An enclosed shower, there has to be a water stop, not installed. This water stop, non-compliant. Mate, you guys have to rip out all the bathrooms, all the laundries, all the floors, non-compliant floors as well. Look at this. What a complete schmuzzle, guys. All the flooring here has to be removed. There is no adequate gap for expansion and contraction. They've, they've actually, oh, I could feel, when I was walking here, I could feel myself going down. I might have to get my marbles and give it a try. We'll do this shortly. But anyway, let's take a look at what else is going on here. I want to finish all the, uh, all the en-suites. 
bathrooms, wet areas, non-compliant. I mean, look how these guys install, installed the grate. I mean, come on, mate. What the hell is this? Oh, no water stop. No water stop. Cabinetry not installed. This guy is doing all these drills. He's trying to find where the stud is and he probably burst a pipe. Mate, what's going on here? Another kitchen? But come on. Let's have a look at this balcony. This balcony, what a completion muzzle. We are greeted with a leak above your head. And then, this waterproofing membrane, first of all, is not UV rated. So, you cannot expose it to the UV and leave it like that. I mean, this guy has just went hard up against the surface here. There's supposed to be a strip drain installed. He's put one little waste right here. And then look how he's sitting. <laughs> look at the barrier. So one fixing point here, and then all the way there. I mean, are you for real, bro? Look at this. Check this out. This does not meet the rating, the proper rating, the NCC requirements for um, the force against the balcony. I think it's around 75 kilo um, pressure. This is gonna, if I lean on it, it's just gonna snap. And I'm only 110 kilos. I've lost so much weight. Thank you. Oh, I'm so happy. Let's keep going. We're gonna go now to the next section right here. This other balcony right here as well. Non-compliant. <laughs> One little drain right here. Oh my God. It's supposed to be a strip drain and the water probably goes, discharges this way. We are gonna get now a spirit level and we're gonna put it there and see if there's a fall to drainage, which I highly doubt. Not only that guys, like this is supposed to be Hebel. Foam. Let's give it a stab. I mean, they have to repair this anyway. Yep, foam, foam, foam. This is foam, it's supposed to be Hebel. I don't care. Mate, rip it out, mate, rip it out. This is supposed to be Hebel, mate. Rip this out. This has to get ripped 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 out. And this has to get ripped out. Hebel is supposed to be installed as per the working drawing. Else you have to give a discount, mate. I mean, you're cutting costs, mate. Foam and render. And uh, so the leak that's happening downstairs is around this area right here. And I'm wondering what, what might have caused it. Do you think this guy that has screwed into this parapet right there has compromised the membrane? I'm not sure, but there is a lot of elements at play here in terms of the water ingress. And look, he loves putting those little blocks here, guys. He loves it. He loves it. I mean, mate, what are these blocks doing here, mate? I mean, seriously, mate. You, you're actually damaging the membrane. Unbelievable. This is completely unbelievable. I'm gonna now get my spirit level and measure what's going on here. But first, I wanna go onto the last balcony and see what's going on, because to be honest, I haven't been on these balconies yet. And also, I wanna do a floor level survey, because the floors are like this, mate. So here as well, let's check this as well. Mm, it can be adequate, but I do not trust it. Not at all. All right, for this balcony, what I've done is that I've taken a level to the upstand right here. I've taken a level. This is the reference point right there because this is a semi-enclosed balcony. I've measured the high point over there. It says it's minus 30, uh, minus 37. So from there to here is actually minus 37 mil. So when this gets blocked up, first of all, there has to be a strip drain. This is non-compliant. Um, what's going to happen is that water will overflow over and it's going to just sit on that capping because it's got a negative fall. So not the best idea here, what they've got. And not only that, I'm actually questioning the installation of that screw right there. There's actually a penetration right here. So when this overflows and the water starts to go into these penetrations, it's going to bypass sections. Um, uh, where the screw has been fixed and it's gonna go downstairs. So we've already got some leaks downstairs. And not only that, have a look at the fall 
four, AS4654 requires a minimum of 10 mil per meter. This is a 12 mil, uh, this is a 1200 mil spirit level. It should read 12 mil, but as you can see, the water is just pulling up in this area because it hasn't got the adequate fall. So they have to change the cladding, re-screed this area, rip out that, that membrane and do it again. And the other thing is, let's have, let's check out um, the bond breaker requirements that we've got here. We've got a uh, class three membrane. We're gonna use our reach blade. I love using this tool because it's a multifunctional ruler as well. If I put it here, we can see the uh, upstand 80 mil. And also have a look what's going on inside here. Let me just turn up the light. Can you see the little uh, pinholes right there already forming? I'm gonna just point to it right now. Right there, there's little pinholes. So what's going on here, and have a look here as well, it's already being compromised. Now imagine if this has been tiled already and there's a hole like that. The hydrostatic pressure of the water that goes underneath the tiles is gonna find this, find this weak point right here and start to go underneath the membrane. Now, why has this occurred? Because you're supposed to have a transition point and AS4654, which is written right there underneath the ruler right here, the Australian standards for external membrane states a 15 mil, 15 mil. And look here, we haven't got that, that transition. We haven't got that transition. Look at this. We haven't got that transition from the um, horizontal to vertical. So this guy has just slapped the membrane on like that. And, and this is what you get. The membranes can't, cannot elongate properly. And you're gonna get this stretching right here and the membrane will get compromised. So not only that, they have to also protect the surface of this membrane. You're like, you can't just put it on the render like this. You can't just put it on the, on the, on the boards like this. Like, have a look at this, guys. You can't just slap it on like this. The vertical termination of the membrane has to be protected. I mean, this as well, look at this. Not adequate. Let's go around other points as well and have a look what they've done. For example, around this timber right here. This timber should have been on top of the tiles and not embedded into the tiles because the installation manual states that there has to be a clearance of at least 50 mil. You can't put it in water like this. So this is also has to get trimmed back. I mean, look what they've done here. For example, they've waterproofed this section right here and it's already coming apart. Just got the, got the brush and slapped it on. Not a care in the world. And this tape right here terminates right there. They gonna, um, there's not, not enough clearance between the timber and uh, the, the substrate. No, no alignment for thermal expansion and contraction. These guys, have done really poor workmanship here. So this is this is the this is common throughout the whole area of balconies. This balcony, the other balcony, and this balcony, all has to get redone. Okay, you know what? Let's go and have a look what's going on in the other ones. We'll 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 hone in and see how they've done um, the membrane at the junctions. For example, this one right here. Take a look. Let's take a look at these points. For example. I love looking into areas where they think no one's going to look at. I mean, over there, you can see, you can see right there how there is no transition of the membrane. This is going to fail. Let's have a look at other sections as well. I mean, have a look. This is a perfect example for you guys right there. They put it straight on the render. I'm going to put a bit of light now inside. Take a look. You can see how the membrane is already getting compromised right here. You can see how the membrane is getting compromised right there inside there. You know, these guys are ready to tie. I mean, look at this, it's already coming apart. No adequate transition from vertical to horizontal. You can see right there, have a look. No adequate transition and this is what you get. Have a look here as well. The vertical termination of the membrane is not adequate as per AS4654. Look at this. We can see it should be around 40 to 50 mil and this is where it terminates and this goes when a tile probably up to here 
and then you can imagine what was going to happen. Water leaks straight downstairs. And I've already shown you guys, water leaks are already happening in this, in this home. Already happening. Poor roofing design, non-compliant roofing. Have a look at the waterproofing here as well. Non-compliant waterproofing. They've got a flashing here with an upstand. However, nothing protecting the, the, the water from coming here, the wind driven rain. This should be higher. And, and even better, has to be returned back here with a water stop at the top. You can see how this is an open area. Wind driven rain can easily enter this home. It's probably already coming in downstairs. And the builder has got a lot of work to do. If he comes back. So I eventually called the manufacturer and I said, Hey man, your QR code is not working, mate. And they directed me back to their website and I downloaded the manual. And the manual stated, funny enough, that if the width of the room or length of the room is more than 15 meters long, an expansion joint must be installed. Let's take a measure of what we're dealing with. 21 meters and no expansion joint. Let's take a measure this side. Eleven. So no movement joint is required here, but it is required on this side and it is nowhere to be seen. Not only that, they have installed the kitchen, some parts of the kitchen, sorry, some parts of the kitchen, like here. Oh, they have see how they've They've elevated it, they've cut it away, that's how you're supposed to do. But they still did a mistake because you need 10 mil expansion, mate. So that's wrong as well. And also there has to be a clearance between the skirting and the bottom of the board of at least one mil. And it is nowhere to be seen as well. So a lot of issues to this home. A lot of issues here. Now, as I was walking around here, I discovered another item which I want to share with you guys as well. Have a look at this, guys. The glazing installation. Someone's removed the silicon and they were asking for trouble. Now, there's a couple of breaches to this glazing unit right here. Can you see this little block right here? It is called a setting block and where the glass sits onto it. Now, there's a couple of breaches here. Let's talk about the setting block. The setting block has to be a minimum of 50 mil. Now let's take a measurement right there. It is around 30 mil. So that's our first breach. And then there has to be a distant piece where it has to go from, it has to be put between the frame here and the glass. And it has to be 25 mil and 50 mil away from the, from the edge. And there's nothing installed here. So that's the second breach. So first we've got the setting block. We've got the distant piece. And we have also the location blocks. It's nowhere to be seen. There's something here, look at this. I don't know, there's a little rubber here, but the thing is it's supposed to be 25 mil long and it is around 15 mil. So that's non-compliant. So um, there's, a, there's a lot of defects going on here for this glazing unit already. Uh, now, there is a sticker here. Hopefully these guys can see it and come back and fix the job. And I'm thinking they all like that here. This is all non-compliant. And this one as well. I mean, if the homeowner gives us authority to strip this silicon off, I'll do it. So let's, let's give this place a scan and see what's going on. I want to have, do a quick scan because I can see already some water leaks inside this home. Let's take a look. I mean, we can see the mold there. You can see a bit of um, dark blue area right here. And you can see that there is a bit of mold right there. Have a look. Elevated moisture levels right there. And then in this room right here, they're installing the flooring. And you can see how it's damp. You can see the visible staining on the timber work. 
already happening already happening and you can see on the moisture meter right there elevated moisture levels they've been trying to figure out what the hell is going on and can't figure it out let's go to the next room and then also we've got this room right here as well water ingress uh, there might be some water coming in. Oh, there is too, isn't there? Have a look at this, mate. Wow. Here as well, a water leak coming from the balcony already. <laughs> look at the stain right here. Just right there where I'm pointing with my laser. Water stain. And these guys. And here's, here's the renderer. Check him out. Working hard. Texture straight on base coat. He doesn't know that he has to remove all the polystyrene, or someone has, but he's wasting materials and labor. Do you guys reckon I should go and tell him that, hey bro, stop working, you're wasting your money? Uh, let me know. So let's keep going here. Let's go and see if there's any points of water ingress. Let's see, let's see, it looks okay, but I reckon there's something going on right here. Right here, where that chimney was. <laughs> oh my God, this is just unbelievable. Uh, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to mount my camera on my chest and I'm going to go talk to this renderer and tell him, hey man, you might have to rip out all the render. So I'm going to mount it right now on my chest and see what's going to happen. So let's go and find out, guys. Hey, bro, you, you know, um, you, you know, this wall here, th th this wall, is this finished, yeah? This one? This one. Scanning. Yeah, this wall. Because that one this is. One, yeah, finished, yeah. Oh, yeah. This one here in the because that one there is not right, not not, not render. He they have to take a wall off. Yeah. You know, just here. No, no, no. It's not. Level this is this is, has to be hebel. This wall right here has to be hebel. Yeah, hebel. But this is foam. This is polystyrene. Check. Is it polystyrene? Yeah, this one. Foam. foam. Yeah, it has to be hebel. Just in the down. Sorry. Me work best in the down. Yeah. Who who installed this? The builder. Yeah. Builder installed this, yeah. And, and this one, Hebel. They put foam. Yeah, this one. This one here, foam. It's supposed to be all Hebel. Yeah. Hebel. Yeah, no foam. Yeah, I saw, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it has to be Hebel. M must be Hebel. So be, make sure you get money before, because he take this off, no pay you. Yeah. Me work just rendering. No, yeah, yeah, I know. But, but the thing is, if, if, if they have to remove this, they're not, he's not going to pay you. Yeah. So just make sure you get your money, man. I mean, this is all wrong. And the, and the top wall all has to be taken off, has to be hebel. All? Yeah. Take? <laughs> Big job, man. Okay, this one. Yeah, this one okay. Uh, th this one's brick, brick okay. This has to be brick, and also here the front. Come and see the front. The front here. <coughs> so the front here, this has to be brick. Yeah. And this is brick. Uh, sorry, this is hebel, 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 brick, 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 and you put foam. I'm saying don't, don't waste your time because if you do it, you're going to have to take it off. <laughs> Just be careful, man. Make sure you get money. <laughs> All right. Unbelievable. If you guys enjoyed this video or you've learned something new, it would help me a lot if you can please subscribe, like and share. This will help our channel grow and reach more customers and please be aware before you make a progress payment guys get it checked out 
go have a look at the job, read your contract, seek legal advice, or you can get the bad boys in. Until next time, my friends, let's go.